Hey, it's Phil Thatch, and today I want to talk to you about why I think the Canon R6 is a much, much better buy than the new Canon R3 that just came out. Or actually, it's not even out yet. It was just announced, and right now YouTube is absolutely flooded with Canon R3 videos talking about all the things it can do, and, you know, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's, you know, it's a mind-blowing camera, but it's $5,999. And this little baby is the Canon R6, which is $2,499. And let's, let's compare those two cameras. You may notice in this video that I won't be mentioning the Canon R5 very much. And the reason for that is I, I don't think it's in the same uh, category as the R6 and the R3. What do you mean? The cheap cameras in the same category as the super expensive category? Well, yeah, uh, both the R6 and the R3, those are for people who don't need super high resolution images. The R6 is 20 megapixels. The R3 is 24. There's not a whole lot of difference in that resolution. The R5 is 45 megapixels or some outrageous number like that. And I just don't need all that resolution. I don't want to deal with those huge files, especially when I take, sometimes if I'm shooting sports uh, or even live music sometimes, I've been known to come home with two or 3,000 pictures. So uh, I prefer lower resolution files, and that's why I like lower resolution cameras. And the R6 and the R3, comparatively, are both lower resolution cameras. Both the R6 and the R3 have the same processor running the camera. They both run on the Digic X processor, but one costs $24.99 and one costs $59.99. Both cameras feature dual pixel CMOS autofocus version 2, and they both have 1,053 autofocus points. Now, the, the R3 has the ability to place the area where you want to focus before you hit the focus button uh, in the frame with your eye. And that is a really cool feature. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm highly interested in that. And perhaps one day, maybe in the Canon R6 Mark II, that might be something that I might get. But remember, the R3 costs $3,500 extra dollars. So is that feature worth $3,500? That's something for you to decide. For me, I think I'm going to stick with my $2,499 R6. Both cameras have two card slots. The R6 has two UHS-2 SD cards. The R3 has one UHS-2 SD card and one CF Express Type-B. So the cards are more expensive and you have to juggle different kinds of cards with the R3. So for that, I might say Advantage R6. I mean, both cameras are relatively low resolution. This one is 20 megapixels and the R3 is 24 megapixels. And that amount of megapixels is just fine. Uh, you know, if you need super high resolution, neither one of these cameras is for you, the, the R6 or the R3. You might be more interested in an R5. The R3 has an integrated grip, so, uh, and you can turn the camera vertically and have extra buttons. But remember, the R3 costs $3,500 extra dollars. The R6, you can buy a attachable grip, uh, which holds two batteries and has buttons that control it when you turn it vertically, but it's $349, bucks, not $3,500. So, you know, and if you don't need that extra weight on the camera, you can take it off. So that might even be an advantage of the R6. Did I mention it was $3,500 cheaper? The R6 can do 4K recording, and the fastest frame rate for that 4K recording is 60 frames per second. The R3 does 4K at 120 frames per second, and I gotta tell you, 4K 120 would be really, really nice, and I wish this camera had it. But, do I wish it had it to the tune of $3,500? I don't think so. I can do a uh, super slow motion, 120 frames per second with this camera. I have to do it at 1080p, and that's fine. I wish it could do 4K, but it's not worth $3,500 to get 4K 120. 
Both cameras have a fully articulating flip screen. Both cameras have a nice EVF. The R3 is higher resolution in the EVF and higher resolution on the back screen, but that's not a big deal to me. The, the resolution in this uh, electronic viewfinder and this back screen is plenty fine for me. Uh, I, I'm never looking through it going, man, that looks bad. It looks great. I've got uh, some other mirrorless cameras, most specifically my uh, little super inexpensive, inexpensive Canon M50, and its EVF looks terrible, but this one looks great. My Nikon Z6 looks great. It's not worth 3,500 extra dollars to have a higher resolution EVF. So if you like to do wildlife photography, there are a very few cameras out there that will do eye detect for wild animals like birds. And probably um, the two best ones are the Canon R6 and the Canon R5. And now the Canon R3 can do that as well. But that's one of the reasons why I tried out this camera. You know, I've shot Nikon for years and years, and suddenly there was a camera that could do eye detect on wild animals, and that's like, okay, well, cool, that's probably going to cost $6,000. Well, this one's only $2,500, and that is what pushed me over the edge after being a Nikon shooter for years and years to try this brand. I wanted to see the eye detect autofocus for animals and it is absolutely unbelievable. And with the R6, you can get it for $3,500 less than the R3. So in silent mode or electronic shutter mode, this camera shoots 20 frames per second. And I made a video recently where I, I followed a bird in flight and shot with the electronic shutter and I got 20 frames in focus of this great blue heron in flight. And then I kept shooting for about another second and a half and ended up getting about 50 shots in focus of a bird in flight in about two and a half seconds. And that, you know what? I can't imagine needing any more than that. Usually I'm pretty happy with 10 frames per second. Uh, I had this camera for several months before I even tried the 20 frames per second. And I was like, wow, you know, I don't know if, I'll ever, if I will use that all that much. The R3 does 30 frames per second, and I bet you it can do it and keep a bird in focus during the whole time. But gosh, do you really need those extra 10 frames a second? And if you do need those extra 10 frames a second, is it worth 3,500 extra dollars? I think 20 frames per second in focus, birds in flight is for $2,500, 3,500 cheaper is probably a better buy. I've done sports photography with this camera. I've shot uh, college soccer and other things with this camera. And gosh, it is just mind blowing how great this camera does. And I'm sure the R3 is every bit as good and maybe even just a little bit better, but I don't think it's better enough to spend $3,500. So if this is a better buy, for 2,500 instead of 6,000, what are you gonna do with that other $3,500? Well, I, I submit that maybe, just maybe, you might invest in this absolutely amazing 70 to 200 f 2.8. When I got mine, it was 26.99, and now the, uh, the price for this lens has just gone up to 27.99. But either one, you can use your $3,500 that you saved by buying the R6 instead of the R3 and get this fantastic lens. And there's several other lenses, um, RF lenses. I highly recommend you get the ones with the L in the name. I've, I've had uh, some experience with some of the cheaper lenses that are not the L variety, and uh, they have some flaring issues and things that I haven't been really happy with, specifically with the 50 millimeter 1.8, which is it works great unless you're pointing it directly at a light source. And I don't really like, I bought the 24 to 105 kit lens, which is super cheap and I thought it would be fine, but it just sometimes, most specifically when you're pointing directly at a, at a light source, these L type lenses handle it really, really well. And those two lenses don't do as well. Now, one lens that I have that is not an L, I have the 800 millimeter F11 uh, lens, which sounds like it would be just horrible, but it is absolutely fantastic. It does really, really good. Uh, it's not as good as my 100 to 500, but it's really inexpensive. As a matter of fact, you can probably buy this lens and the 800 F11 with the change left over from not buying the R3. You might need to kick in an extra couple of hundred dollars 
but not much. So, um, you know, if you need a super pro camera with, that, has a, that has a network jack on it, I don't need a network jack on my camera. If you need all that stuff, get the R3. I think it'll be a great camera. But for me, I think the money is better spent on this R6, which is very inexpensive, and it's absolutely mind-blowingly fantastic. Because if you're like me, I shoot a lot. I go out and shoot every time I get a chance, and sometimes I come home with two or 3,000 pictures on my card. So I wear out cameras about every two years on the minimum, and sometimes I might be able to keep one uh, running really good for five years. But these lenses, lenses are a better investment. Buy the premium lenses. They'll last you 10, 15, 20, maybe even longer than that years. And by the inexpensive body, which it gets updated quicker. Uh, you know, probably by the time the R6 Mark II or Mark III comes out, it'll have better features than that R3. So you can buy three generations of the R6. You might be able to get an R6, an R6 II, and then pay for a good bit of an R6 Mark III for the money that you would spend on one R3. I think that's a better investment. All right, so there is my little editorial video talking about how I think the R6 is a much better buy than the new R3, although I think they're both gonna be absolutely fantastic cameras. I like the idea, as I've mentioned many, many times in this video of saving $3,500 and getting an R6. So uh, I hope you like the content. If you do, a thumbs up is very much appreciated. Helps me out quite a bit. You want to see some more stuff like this and all sorts of other things on this channel, subscribe, hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.